Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. I'm grateful to be here with all of you at the Lotus Feet of the Lord Jesus. And I'll speak today on the topic of a grateful heart is a powerful heart. And I'll speak this based on Shri Prabhupada's prayers on arriving in America. They are called as the Markin and Harbor Dharma. The prayers to the Lord about how to share the message of the Bhagavad So I'll talk about this broadly. We'll reflect on the prayer and we'll reflect about how gratitude is a power. <clears throat> Shri Prabhupada came to America at an advanced stage of 69 and he was all alone. He had practically no money. He had just 40 rupees which he gave from India. And actually, do you, do you know when Shri Prabhupada spent those 40 rupees? In 1968 when he went back to India and from the airport when he wanted to go to the temple, that time the rickshaw took those 40 rupees. <laughs> so those 40 rupees which Prabhupada came with, he didn't use even one paisa on that. So Prabhupada came with no contacts, no institutional support, practically no money. And, now, and on the way, the, practically the only material resource that he had, that was his own body, that had sustained two heart attacks. Now, whenever anything bad happens to us, a natural human reaction is to be resentful. Why is this happening to me? And you could say the opposite of being resentful is being greedy. So Prabhupada has come to the American coastline and he sees this magnificent coastline, all the people busy in their own lives. He's a person who's never crossed even the Indian continent any time before. And he's all alone, such an incredible and unsurmountable challenge. And the first verses that he first words that he composes, first lines in that song is Krupa Kuhile Krishna. That you have been so merciful to me, oh Lord Krishna. Now, when I read this for the first time in 15, 17, 20, more than 20 years ago, it struck me. What is the mercy in this? They are alone and far away, you no know, money. And Bodo Krupa what is the mercy of here? So actually, what Srila Prabhupada was saying is that now what is the mercy of Krishna? At least he has the opportunity to fulfill the instruction of his own spiritual master. He doesn't have any facility to fulfill it in terms of resources, but at least he has the opportunity. And he is grateful just for the opportunity. So now, from one perspective, a lot of bad things have happened to me. So normally, when we start off in our life, you ask some small child, 10, 12 years old, what do they want to be in life, grow up? And they have some grandiose ambitions. Maybe somebody say, I want to become the next president of America. Or maybe I want to become the biggest CEO of the CEO of the biggest startup company in history. Or something like that. And then as they grow older, life starts beating them. Is reverses. Same person who said, I want to become the CEO of the biggest company in the world. By the time they graduate, they think, if I get a job, it will be good. <laughs> <laughs> so what happens? As life beats us down, we have big, big dreams and aspirations. They all start shrinking. Because we start realizing life is incredibly tough. Apashila Prabhupada, he had had the kind of reversals in his life that most of us can't even imagine live alone survive. Now he started, he, <clears throat> he had a genuine desire to serve his spiritual master and he was already married when he met his spiritual master. So he thought, I can't renounce. So let me earn a lot of money and donate for my spiritual master mission. And he worked very hard to try multiple businesses. But various things went wrong, sometimes his own servants. A wrong hand, sometimes a fire broke out, sometimes the business line went down, and his business was not very successful. Then we tried it multiple places, multiple times, sometimes in Kolkata, sometimes in Mumbai, sometimes in Allahabad, traveling. 
Then along with that, he also tried to do something spiritually. He himself single-handed tried to run a magazine with the Baptist body. And well, not only was nobody interested, at that time a cow came and ran over him. And he fell un almost unconscious on the ground. So, whatever he tried, he tried to start a league of devotees, a separate institu institution before his con. And the same people who were supporting him became his opponents. Then he tried to work with his God, with his own God family, and they said they just didn't want him to become too influential. And somehow everything that he tried to do just collapsed. Almost everything. So it's so easy to become resentful. Well, finally, normally we try to do something and it doesn't work. We try to do something and it doesn't work. Gradually, our we start losing hope. But instead of Prabhupada's spiritual ambitions going down, they grew bigger and bigger. He had no success worth the name in India, and he said, "I want to go to America." Hmm. Ah, people would give the strange looks at that thing, America. The Sumati Moraji, who was a sponsor, who eventually helped him come to America. She told him, my secretaries are saying that you cannot go to America. I says, why not? She says, Swamiji, America is so cold and you are so old. <laughs> <laughs> How will you survive there? So Prabhupada said, nothing is going to happen. Prabhupada somehow persuaded her and he finally came. So there were so many things, one after another, after another, going wrong in his life. Everything that he was trying was backfiring. And still, Prabhupada never became resentful. So how can one be grateful in such a situation when everything seems to be going wrong? So I'll talk about three principles. I'll use an acronym called ACE. ACE your life with gratitude. And when bad things happen in our life, how can we be grateful? So A is look for the good around the bad. Bad things have happened, but instead of fixating on what is bad, Look for the good around it. So what was Sri Prabhupada doing? He was not thinking about, oh, I have come alone, I am just recovering from this heart attack. See, look for the good around the world. At least I am here in America. At least I have an opportunity to fulfill the instruction of the spiritual, spiritual master. And in general, what we look for is what we find. <clears throat> that means if we are looking for how the how life is unfair, how the world is unjust, how people are so bad with us, we will find the evidence for that. And it is true. People will sometimes betray us. It is true that terrible things will happen. Sometimes we don't even do a small mistake and still a big reaction comes upon us. So it just happens to everyone in life. But either we can look at the bad. See, when something bad has happened, we basically have two options. Either we, we resent it and then we get crushed under our own resentment. When that happens, actually resentment of reality often hurts more than the reality itself. Say, for example, suppose you are supposed to go for an outing. Maybe with all your friends, a spiritual picnic. And just the night before that picnic, you get flu. And then, now you are in bed. And all your friends are maybe sending photos on Facebook of where they are going, what they are doing, this kirtan, and this side, this, this program. And, you know, we start thinking, why did this have to happen to me? Now, I mean, a flu, flu is not necessarily particularly painful. But, resentment, why did this happen to me, hurts us much more than the flu. So, resentment of reality hurts more than reality. So, if we are looking for how, how many bad things are happening in my life, we will find so many bad things happening. But if we look for the good, even if this bad thing is there, I can't deny it, it is bad. I can't imagine it is good, it is bad. But look for the good around the bad. Okay, what, okay this is bad, but what is good? So, Prabhupada was appreciating that he had the opportunity to serve his spiritual master. If we look around us in our own lives, there are so many things right. If we are just alive, 
That means there is more right than wrong with us. Whatever our average age is 35, 40, 50, 60. Millions of people die before they come to our age. So if we are just living, we have reason to be grateful. And we are not just living, there are hundreds of things which are good in our life. If we can look at, we may have a, we may have a good family with us, a good social network with us. We have our spiritual association, we may have health, we may have health insurance. So many things which are good in our life. The mind tends to fixate on all that is wrong. So we need to consciously get it back. Now sometimes, gratitude has been recognized as a virtue even by people who are non-spiritualist. Even atheists recognize that we should be grateful. But then you ask them, okay, you're great. I'm grateful. Okay, whom are you grateful to? <laughs> no, I'm grateful in general. <laughs> <laughs> to say I'm grateful in general is like saying I'm married in general. <laughs> <laughs> Marriage is to a specific person. You are not married in general. <laughs> so, it's good that somebody who is atheistic is also trying to cultivate gratitude. But gratitude is meaningless without an object for the gratitude. Whom are you grateful to? So yes, we can be grateful to our parents, our friends, our family members, other devotees around us. Ultimately, we are grateful to Krishna. So Prabhupada is saying, Boro Krupa Koyle Krishna. So he could have looked at, I'm alone, I'm old, I'm sick, what am I doing on this land? But he did not look at all that. He looked for the good around the bad. In the big picture, at least I have the opportunity to serve my spiritual master. Prabhupada had his own disarming humility. And once he was asked, once he himself raised the question to the disciples, do you know why I went to America? Since my godbrother went to London, he went to UK, why did I go to America? Now, of course, there are many reasons. After the Second World War, UK stock went down, America stock went subsequently, hugely up. So, when in the past, before the first, second world war, it was said that the British Empire was so big that the sun never set on it. And Prabhupada went to London, he said the sun never rises here. <laughs> <laughs> Since for most of the season it's quite uh, dark over there, cloudy at least. So anyway, Prabhupada, so naturally America was more important, so Prabhupada came there. But Prabhupada in his own humility said, he said, my, my, my god brothers went to London, they couldn't succeed. So I thought, if I'm going to fail, let me try at some other place and fail. <laughs> <laughs> so, that is Prabhupada's gallant spirit. Let me do what I can. So, he was all alone, but he was looking for the good around the bad. That was A. What was the acronym I said I discussed? Look for the good around the bad. Yeah, A is. So, A is around. So, A is. It's like an ace card you have in a card game. So C is counter. That means look for the good to counter the bad. There is something good in general in our life. But if something bad has happened, you may say, okay, all this is good, but this bad thing is still there in my life. I can't deny it. Okay, among the good things that are there in your life, look for the, that particular good that can help you to counter the bad. Say, suppose you know, uh, our health collapses. We get some disease or something like that. Then look, okay, what we may say, oh, why, why, why did I get this sickness? That's one way of looking at it. Another way of looking at it is look for the good that helps you to counter the bad. So that means you can say, okay, what do I have? I still have, a, I still have, a, maybe I have got health insurance. My overall health has been good. I've got friends who are doctors. I've got a supportive community. I'm ready to discipline. I have a habit of living a disciplined life. So I can recover. So look for the good to counter the bad. Uh, when, <clears throat> if you see in this particular song, Shri Prabhupada, his whole focus is on the principle of speaking the Bhagavad. He says, so, so Prabhupada, he has come for a particular mission. That mission is, he wants to share the message of Krishna's love. And there is a world filled with materialism and even nihilism, hedonism. But Prabhupada is going to share the message of Krishna as well. And what is the good that he has to counter the bad, the whole influence of passion and ignorance that is there all around him? What is there to counter that? So, 
it is he says bhagwate ra katha se tabavata dhir hoya shunne jaldi ka ne bar bar says krishna you are present with me as the bhagwatam bhagwatam is your avatar and not just the physical book bhagwatam but is the recitation of the bhagwatam bhagwate ra katha se tabavata you in your full potency are manifested as the bhagwatam and he says what is the potency of the bhagavatam dhira hoya one will become sober chuli jaldi ka ne bar bar if one just hears the bhagavatam again and again one will become sober and then this is a bengali song but shri prabhupad follows krishnadas kaviraj goswami's style and he liberally interspers bengali words bengali composition with sanskrit verses So one to seventeen to twenty-one, Prabhupada quotes five verses over there. In the Bengali song, there is Sanskrit verses, and they are essentially what? If you hear the Bhagavatam, one can pure it. Nashta prayeshu, vadreshu. That just all the anathas in the heart go away. Shrivatam, Swakatha, Krishna. All those verses, beautiful verses are there. So Prabhupada is not just looking at oh, what a big task I have. Generally, in the religious context. war metaphors can be a little alarming for people because people are a little afraid of religious violence but if we consider this is prabhupada is launching a war against ignorance he is not looking at the size of the ignorance in front of him he is looking at the lord the lord manifestation as the bhagavata so he has to fight a big war but prabhupada has the weapon of the knowledge of the bhagavata so he is focusing not on the size of the opposition but the strength of his weapon to so look for the good to counter the bad generally our mind mind overpowers us by making us believe that we are powerless whenever we are facing a problem the mind makes us believe that you are helpless you are powerless you can do nothing now there is actually constantly a voice going on in our head and that voice keeps speaking So for example, the voice, your voice in your head might be speaking. When will this class end? I'm hungry now. <laughs> or, or the voice may say, "I'm sitting on the floor. I'm sitting for so long." Or the voice may say, "The voice may even say, 'There is no voice in your head.'" <laughs> <laughs> But that is the voice in your head which is saying there is no voice in your. So it's like the enemy who denies their existence to attack you. So this this voice is constantly there in our head. And it's constantly discouraging us. We try to do anything good, it's never going to work out. What use is it? And like that, it keeps discouraging us. So the mind makes us believe that we are powerless, and then it overpowers us. So we, when, whenever bad things have happened to us, we can't deny the bad thing, but we have to look at what is the good with which we can counter the bad. So now, ultimately, Prabhupada is looking at the Bhagavad. and that was his power actually what did shri prabhupada do in america or all over the world he just spoke about krishna and that transformed people's hearts so for all of us krishna is always there with us and if we connect with krishna that is the good that can help us to counter the bad and it is not just krishna if you look around us even at a material level there may be so many good things for us Some of you may notice. Some of you may notice that I need crutches to walk. So I have I have a physical handicap. I have polio since my childhood, since I was one. So sometimes when I go and talk with uh, talk to people with special needs, I give some talks about motivation, spiritual inspiration, motivation, and acceptance. So after that, when I talk with those people, one of the things that strikes me is that so many of them. Are still fighting battles that are already lost. Hmm. I mean, say somebody has lost a hand, or somebody has lost a leg, somebody has lost an eye. So that might have happened six months ago, one year ago, five years ago. So that battle is already lost. You can't do anything about it. But still, they are fighting that battle. Why did this happen? Why did this happen? You know, to fight to fight battles that are already lost is to be lost in the present. So now, when I look back at my life. I I never remember being resentful like that. 
So after some one such meeting, I started thinking about it. Uh, my parents would tell me that obviously I couldn't run and play like other children. Uh, so what had happened was my parents had given a I have polio. My parents had given a polio dose. I have a vaccine for me. But it was a small town in, in, in India, in Maharashtra, and the medical facilities were not so good. So the doctor who gave that vaccine had not kept the vaccine very carefully. So the vaccine so dose go, became, became too strong and the vaccine ended, me, ended up giving me the polio. So after that, of course, I had a maternal uncle in America at that time. He, he first thing he asked and my mother when she told us, have you sued the doctor? <laughs> <laughs> so in India, there is no culture of that. But anyway, as I grew up, my parents would tell me that, that whatever God has taken from you in physical ability, he has given you in intellectual ability. And I used to think, you know, who is this God? He has such power over me that he can take anything and give anything. <laughs> but still, the point was that because they, they shifted that focus. Okay, I, I can't do this, but I'm good at this. But somehow because of that, I was never resentful of it. Now, anybody who sees me for the first time, they, they see the crutches very prominently. Now, I don't even notice that I have the crutches. Not that because I'm so transcendental, but it's just that I have become used to it. It's just like glasses for me. I can't see without glasses, I need glasses. But I don't think about the glasses constantly. I just wear them and move on. So when I take crutches and walk on. So what happens is for me, because I was able to shift by my parents or help or whatever, that look for the good that helps you to move on. So for all of us, we need to look at the good. The, there is always a perplexing philosophical question. You know, why do bad things happen to good people? Now, Prabhupada is not going to do any philosophy in this song and he's saying that, no, it's because of my own karma this happened or anything like that. The whole mood of the Bhagavatam is different. The Bhagavatam doesn't try to address the question, why do bad things happen to good people at a philosophical level? What does the Bhagavatam instead do? The Bhagavatam changes the question. When bad things happen to good people, what do good people do? And the whole Bhagavatam is essentially different cases of people to whom bad things have happened and how they have responded. Starting from a central character, Parikshit Maharaj himself, for no fault of his or very minor fault, he is cursed to die in seven days. Rutrasura just laughs, sorry, not Rutrasura, Chitraketu just laughs and he is cursed to become a demon. Dhruva, he just wants to sit on his father's lap and is severely insulted by his stepmother. So, one after another, if you look at the stories of the Bhagavatam, they are all bad things happening to people. And none of them get into philosophy of, oh, is it my own karma or whatever. No, focus on what do good people do when bad things happen to them. So, we see what does Parikshit Maharaj do? Parikshit Maharaj goes to the forest. Look for the good to counter the bad. What is the good to counter the bad? Okay, that is going to come. Let me absorb myself in Krishna. By which, although the body will die, but the soul will get liberated. It's like you know, death is unavoidable for everyone. But suppose a car, it is just you know, racing toward the cliff, and from that cliff it is going to fall off. Now, if we look at the car as a race, the race goes off the cliff and crashes to the ground and explodes. We may think that the person inside is dying. But suppose there's a, this doesn't happen in real life so much, but, but in action movies you might see like this. Suppose there's a rescue helicopter from above. And this car automatically turns out to be like a convertible. So it opens up. And then the rescue rope is thrown from above. And this person catches it. And just as the car goes off the tip, the person is pulled out. And that person goes to the helicopter. And it's safe. So, this may not happen in real life, but this is what Krishna does to his devotees. And this is what happens to Parishit Maharaj. The body goes to his death as per the curse, but the soul gets liberated. So, what does Parishit Maharaj do? He looks for the good to counter the bad. Now, in this case, counter is not counter the curse, but counter the impact of the curse to raise his consciousness upward. 
it's a beautiful that when in the in the when all the sages come there parikshit maharaj doesn't ask them you know why did this happen to me there's no resentment over there instead he's grateful now that this great danger has come upon come on me i'm so grateful that all of you are there to help me make this journey help me make this transition so look for the good to counter the bad and the last is e e is look for the good that emerges from the bad the bad is here but it will try to be bad but good can emerge from it and that is what we see in the prabhupada's mood prabhupada says ache kichu karj tabe ei anumane na heke no ani bena ei ugrastane my dear lord you must have some plan otherwise why would you bring me here and it's interesting prabhupad says why are you bringing me to this ugrastane ugrastane is this terrible place i don't know if any other indian who has come to america has said why have i come to this terrible place for <laughs> <laughs> most people america is like a dream land about 25 years ago i had given gri and i had a opportunity to come to america and instead i i decided to search the prabhupada and krishna so after about 20 years i came to know some my relatives were very disappointed very angry with me <laughs> and then after after about 20 years i came to america on a spiritual speaking tour and then after that when i went back to india all my relatives were not called me for 20 years they called us started talking with this now your life has become successful <laughs> so prabhupa and he saying why is he saying this ugrasthan is everybody else says this wonderful place and the prabhupa is seeing from a spiritual perspective that nobody everybody is covered by the moors of passion and this and that's it he saying krishna why have you brought me here achhe kichu karj you must have some purpose you must have some plan so he concludes the song by saying my dear lord whatever is your plan just make me your puppet in the plan na cha na cha prabhu na cha se mate kashthira putali jata na cha se mate just make me dance lord just the puppet here makes a puppet sound make me dance What what is the mood over here? See, he is not talking about surrender. Simply, I'll raise my hand and surrender. Passive. He says, I will dance, but you guide me how to dance. That means I will do my part, but you tell me what my part is. So, Prabhu Pa is looking for the good that will emerge from the bad. Right now, it is very dark and dreary. Prabhu Pa also says that there are many times he thought, let me just go back to India. What am I going to do over here? But he said, yeah, come here, let me give you a drink. Keep trying, keep trying, and eventually, how Krishna made Prabhupada dance. You know, Prabhupada just in ten, ten, eleven years after that, he built a hundred and eight temples across the world. He went around the world fourteen times on global tours of speaking about Krishna. He inspired millions of people toward God consciousness and Krishna consciousness, and wrote over seventy books. It was phenomenal what Shri Prabhupada achieved. So Krishna had his plan. Krishna had his time, and the bad things were happening, but the good was emerging from it. So Prabhupada, he followed Krishna. Krishna says, "Dadaami buddhi yoga matam yena mama payanti te." I will give you the intelligence by which you can make wise decisions. You can come to me. You can get others to me. But what is the condition for that? Teshaam se tada yogda na. You know, pretty poor welcome. We have to serve Krishna affectionately, not bajetam khuna poor welcome, not bajetam resentment poor welcome. <laughs> no, it is all of us, even in our devotional life. Now things will happen which will just make us shocked. We will sometimes see that some devotees will. Inspire us a lot, and sometimes it will happen that some devotees will make us feel that oh my God, oh, do I want to become a devotee? 
It will happen because everybody is different, everybody has their conditionings. So what happens? We have to look for the good to counter the bad and look for the good that will emerge from the bad. So if we are patient, if we are not passively patient, but perseverantly patient, we do our part and wait for Krishna to do his part. And no matter how dark the present may be, Krishna will bring a brighter future out of it. That is Krishna's experience. And it is, as I started by saying, the topic is a grateful heart is a powerful heart. Why grateful? Although Krishna is present in our heart, we block Krishna out of our heart if we don't have gratitude. If we are resentful, then Krishna can't enter into our heart or enter, make, make his presence manifest in our heart and he can't act through us. Even when he wants to help us, he can help us only when we open our heart. So, to the extent we can cultivate gratitude, to the extent we can access Krishna's power, Krishna's power, and that can make us much, much more powerful than what, what we could be otherwise. So, even at a material level, each one of us has many things to be grateful for. And at a spiritual level, just the opportunity to connect with Krishna, the opportunity to chant Krishna's name, the opportunity to practice bhakti. It's something so rare. And that opportunity to remember Krishna, to take shelter of Krishna, is something which nothing can take away from us. Nothing can take away unless we give it away. So I'll conclude with one example about how in life bad things will happen. It's just inevitable. So <clears throat> Sometimes we feel when the bad thing is happening, where is Krishna? I am praying, Krishna, Krishna is not helping. So in the Madhva Vishnu tradition, an example is given. That suppose say there is a teacher who is somewhat strict. And there is a mother and there is a student. Now the teacher has told the student to do some homework. But the student has not done the homework. And the mother knows that the teacher is strict and the teacher will punish the student. What is the punishment? Show your hand. Nowadays, of course, such a teacher will get a charge of violence. <laughs> <laughs> but that was maybe I mean, we have missed something in the past. So the teacher beats with a stick. Now the mother knows the teacher will beat with a stick. But the mother doesn't want the child to be beaten. But the mother also doesn't want the child to be undisciplined. So what the mother does is before the child goes to school, the mother puts a nice thick glove. In the heart of the child. And the child goes to school and the teacher asks, Have you done your homework? No. Come here. Come here. Show your hand. Close the hand. The stick falls on the hand and a loud noise comes. But the glove protects. And the child is not hurt. So the blow hits, but the blow doesn't hurt. So in this example, we are like that. Child, material nature, Maya Devi, the laws of karma, and all of them are like the teacher. And Krishna is like the mother. And the remembrance of Krishna, Krishna consciousness, is like the glove. So, if we remember Krishna, if we take shelter of Krishna, if we pray to Krishna, the blows of life will hit us, but they won't hurt us that much. Because we will be internally sheltered by Krishna. Krishna says, if you become conscious of me, you will pass over all obstacles by my grace. So, where is Krishna? Krishna may not, may not remove the suffering itself, the source of suffering, but Krishna will reduce the impact of the suffering by giving us inner strength, by giving us inner absorption. Like I earlier said, resentment of reality hurts more than reality. So instead of resenting the reality, we are thinking about Krishna, that reality will not hurt us that much. But unfortunately, imagine this child thinks, hey, today is so hot and this glove is so heavy. The child takes out the glove, throws it, throws it away and then goes to school. <laughs> then what will happen? The child will get beaten. So like that, if we neglect Krishna consciousness, and then when danger comes, then we are caught unequal to it. So if we take shelter of Krishna, then, whatever karma may get us to, 
whatever karma may get us to, Krishna will get us through. Whatever karma may get us to, Krishna will get us through. So I'll summarize. I spoke to them Siva, a grateful heart is a powerful heart. I started by talking about Srila Prabhupada's Markini Bhagavad Dharma song and how Prabhupada is grateful. Oh, Krishna, you are so merciful to me. Although I could say at a material level, there's nothing to be grateful for. He's all alone. He has no money, he has no associates, no supporters, you know. And his whole life, most of his life has been like a track record of great endeavor but little results. Oh, but Prabhupada will never become the same. So the bad things have happened, but he's looking for the good around the bad. That is, although my service has not got any results, much results, but now I have opportunity to do the service that my spiritual master wanted me to do. That is the good thing, I am grateful for that. So for all of us, if we just look objectively, there are many, many good things in our life. But unfortunately, our mind fixates on the bad and makes our whole life miserable. So, if we become resentful of the bad things that have happened, then the resentment of reality hurts more than reality. So, first look for the good around the bad. Then, that is, we have this acronym, A-C-E-A-C. -E so, C was counter. Okay, the bad is still there. Okay, what are the good things that can help you to counter the bad? So, Prabhupada was alone, resourceless, we could say. But he had a very powerful resource. That was the Bhagavatam. And he spoke that and he was confident that this, by this I can count. So we can look for, whenever any problem is there in our life, maybe after you go back home, whatever is the biggest problem troubling you, look at, instead of the problem, look at the resources you have to count. At. And that the mind overpowers us by making us believe that we are powerless. But when we see, we do have some power to deal with the situations. Then we don't feel so powerless. And then our mind doesn't, can't overpower us. I talk about my, how I not feel it. People with special needs, I find many of them fighting battles that are already lost. So instead, because my parents shifted my vision from my physical ability to my intellectual ability, I never was too resentful about things. So we also need to shift the vision from the size of the problem to the strength of the resource that we have to be. And then E was evaluation. The bad things might be bad, right? But Krishna can bring good out of the bad. So Prabhupada had that faith. Krishna, you must have some plan why you have brought me here. And make me play my part in your plan. Make me dance, oh Krishna. So if we focus on that, what can I do in this situation? Krishna, how can I serve you? How can I move forward? Even if small steps we start taking, using the resources we have, patiently and persistently, just do going on. Krishna will bring us to a better place, a brighter place. So when bad things happen, we may play, where is Krishna? He's not helping me. Yes, he's helping us, maybe not by removing the problem, but reducing the impact of the problem. It's like a mother who gives a glove to a child who is to be punished by a strict teacher. So the remembrance of Krishna itself is a source that is always with us. And if we regularly put on the glove, that means we regularly practice sadhana bhakti, so that we make a habit of remembering Krishna. Then when the danger hits us, the glove will be in place. And then, Whatever karma may get us to, Krishna will get us through. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. <laughs>
uh, I mean, uh, short uh, clips of yours on YouTube where you mentioned that I think during this period, uh, being there as a supportive uh, person, of course, is more important. And then we can help them get through that uh, challenge because sometimes, I think in your situation, since you have gone through that experience, you can speak for it. But many people haven't gone through that experience and they try to pacify someone who has gone through or who is going through that experiences. But since the person sees that the other person who is giving them the advice hasn't gone through it, yeah. they, they're not able to understand what it is. So I just want to Yeah, that's true. So when we are, sometimes when somebody is going through trouble, it's more important to be there to support them rather than to instruct them. Uh, yeah, I think we should see philosophical knowledge as one resource to help them. But the purpose is to help them. Right? Sometimes philosophical knowledge may not be what is required. It's like when Abhimanyu is killed, at that time Arjuna is shattered. Arjuna lashes out at everyone, lashes out at his brother, he said, Are all your weapons just like bangles? None of you will protect my son. And even turns to Krishna. He says, Krishna, you must have known what was happening. Why, why didn't you tell me? No, Krishna doesn't start speaking philosophy over there. He's not the you're not the body of the soul. Why are you attached to the body? Or his body? He doesn't speak all. Krishna is there with Arjuna to help him. And the way he helps him is Arjuna, all of us are just as grieved as you are. So for all your brothers, Abhimanyu was their son as much as he was your son. They are in as much grief as you are. He says, great people do not increase the pain of others by their words, but try to decrease their pain. Please do not speak such words to Arjuna. We are all suffering here. So, Krishna is very emphatic. There is a time to speak philosophy and there is a time to not speak so we have to see appropriately what is the best way to help someone. Now, what are the, uh, now when somebody is going through some difficulty, how to help them? And we have to see it specifically. I'm not going to say that. I was just don't be this We have to see how to help them, definitely. But I was making a general observation of something that has happened maybe a year ago, two years ago, five years ago, and still they have not processed it. Now we have to move on in life. And if you keep holding on to resentments from the past, then we stay longer in the past. So how we specifically get out of it, that's a specific thing which has to be done up sensitively according to case to case. But what I was talking about the principle itself, that we can't stay longer in the past resenting what has happened. Okay. Thank you. Any questions? Thank you very much. The Prabhupada ki, Gaur Bhakta Vrinda ki, Gaur Primaan. It was really nice. He came this Friday.